Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa barik ala al-ashraf al-anbiya wal mursilin. Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama taslima kathira. Amma ba'd. Alhamdulillah. In uh, this lesson we've reached uh, al-hadith al-rabi ashr. Hadith number 14. Now, hadith number 14. And this is a hadith. Likewise, narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, where he says, Qal, Su'altu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyu al-amala ahabu ilallah, ahabu ilallah, azza wa jal. Qal, as-salat ala waqtiha, Qultu thumma ayy, Qal, al-bir walidayn, Qultu thumma ayy, قال الجهاد في سبيل الله رواه البخاري ومسلم وأحمد. This hadith is narrated by عبد الله بن مسعود which he says and just before we begin the matter of the hadith where it says قال نعم قال the fact that here is a sahabi that narrates نعم he says قال and he says or the messenger of Allah صلى said the fact that it's a Sahabi that narrates this, then Labat says no affair, there's no issue with this. And this is something which is accepted straight away because all of the Sahaba are adul, all of them are thiqat, all of them are trustworthy, and it's accepted from them. However, when you find the manner in which a hadith is narrated, then you find that they are of levels. Naam. When Qala is of the lower of them. So the highest level is where a person will say, Sumitu Fulan and Yukul. So I heard Sumitu. Naam Sumitu. Why? Why is Sumitu the highest level? Why would you consider this to be the highest level? There's no doubt that you heard. There's no room for. Uh, to at least or anything other than that. Now I'm for some form of uh, mentioning wordings which may carry more than one meaning. Now I'm, so if I first said Sumitu, I heard, this is something which is definite. Sumitu. Then you have, for example, Haddathana or Haddathani. So so and so has narrated. Now I'm narrated to me. Haddathan. Then you have Akhbarana. So I was informed. Akhbarana, I was informed. Then you have An. On the authority of. So on the authority of Fulan, that this was said. Now here you can see how it's weaker now. Compared to Sumetu, Sumetu was something which is definite, completely definite. I heard. Then you have An. Now, on authority of. So this doesn't necessarily suggest that he has heard it. Naam, first person. He's heard it straight directly, Yani. I can say on authority of so and so. I mean it that so-and-so had said this, but it doesn't mean that I heard it directly from them. There could be another person in between. Naam. Then you have, after that, as we mentioned, Qala. I so-and-so said. So now we are affirming that they said it, but we're not affirming who heard it. There's not even any indication who heard it. And then the lowest of them all would be Kila. I, it was said. It was said. So you're not even affirming who said it. Naam. But here in this narration, as we have Qala, it's mentioned by a Sahabi, as we mentioned. So due to the fact that it's mentioned by a Sahabi, then there's no discussion about the levels of, of, of its acceptance because it's a Sahabi that narrates that. Naam. And he says, that I asked the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which are the actions that are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He said, as salah ala waqtiha. And he's praying the salah in his correct time. And then we said, I said, then which? Well, I said, then which? I said, bitter while he did. Dream dutiful towards the parents. I said, then which? And he said, al jihad fi sibidillah. Al jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a hadith which is found in Bukhari, Muslim, and Ahmed. As for the tarjama, as for the tarjama, the biography of the Sahabi, the narrator of the hadith, then this is something which has been mentioned previously. Naam, I Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, is something that we mentioned previously, uh, the fifth hadith. As for some of the meanings of the hadith or the wordings found in this hadith, then we have Ahabu ila Allah, yani more beloved to Allah. And what is meant by that is these are the actions that carry the most amount of love with Allah <coughs> and the greater amount of virtue as well. So the most amount of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a greater amount of virtue. Likewise, Bir Walidain is Ta'atuhuma Wal Qiyam bi Hakukihima Wal Ihsan ilayhima. So Bir Walidain is obeying the two of obeying the two parents. Bir Walidain is obeying the two parents, establishing their rights. And being good towards them. Establishing the good, the affair of Ihsan, towards them. And this is something that we, uh, I think we discussed two weeks ago. We were discussing the affair of Ihsan itself. I believe, I don't know if it was within the lesson or just after the lesson. We mentioned that Ihsan is of three types. The Ihsan of the abd of the servant is of three types. Do you remember? The ihsan of the servant is of three types. Something is mentioned by a sheikh of Fawzan. Another from the mashaykh and the ulama. The first is the ihsan of the servant with his lord. The ihsan of the servant with his lord. The ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is Ihsan in relation to the definition of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions and ta'budu Allah ka'annaka tarah fi'illam tukun tarah fi'innuhu yaraak that you worship Allah as if you see him indeed you don't see him but he sees you this is Ihsan in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you worship Allah as if you see him but you do not see him, but know that he sees you. This is what this is the ihsan of Allah Ta'ala. And the two levels of that. Worship Allah as if you see him. Or the affair of worship of, of um, having the awareness that Allah sees you. Naam, is that clear, Khwan? Then you have ihsan towards insan, yani mankind themselves. So ihsan towards the people. Right, this is by way of person adhering to good adab, good mannerisms. Now, they adore themselves with good mannerisms. And this ihsan towards the people, at the head of them, naam, or from the heads of them, is, are the parents. From the ihsan towards the parents. Right, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions directly after the affair of Tawheed. وَعْوَذُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْفِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So he mentions the affair of Tawheed. Worship Allah ta'ala alone. I do not associate anything in partnership with him. And be dutiful and good towards the parents. And the third is the Ihsan towards the animals, the haywanat, the bahaim, cattle, animals, and the like of that. 
you know, doubt a person should treat the animals that are that they are responsible for and that in their care in a manner which is of rahma and general ihsan. For example, the slaughtering. If a person is to slaughter an animal, then they should make sure that the blade is sharp so that they, they don't cause any undue harm to the animal. Naam. Likewise, they don't slaughter the animal in front of others. Likewise, they don't sharpen the blade in front of the animal itself. All of these affairs from Ihsan. Naam. And it goes on to mention, the Shaykh goes on to mention the ma'na, the meaning of jihad, fi sibidillah. The jihad, fi sibidillah. It's better than nafs wal mal, fi da'at al kuffar, ila Allah wa kitalihim, li i'la kalimatillah. So, the jihad is the striving of oneself and their wealth in calling the disbelievers to Allah and striving or fighting against them to make the kalima of Allah, i.e. the kalima of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, the most high. Naam. And this is the, the affair. This is the... This is the affair in jihad, of jihad and da'wah, yani, generally speaking as well. The when a person is seeking to give da'wah and call to this affair of Tawheed, is with the goal and with the aim, yani, the hadaf, the goal of making the kalimah of Tawheed al uliya the most high, the most raised. Naam. So we have the manner of al-ijmali, the general meaning of the hadith. So kana sahabi al-jaleel Abdullah ibn Mas'ud min qara'a al-suhaba wa nam wa faqa'ihim wa ulama'ihim wa kanat as'ilatuhu lil-rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tunbi'a an fiqhihi wa idraqihi. فكما سأل هنا أن أحب الأعمال إلى الله فإننا نجد في الأسئلة السؤال أن أعظم الذنوب وأشدها. طيب. So the Sheikh he begins when explaining the Hadith itself. He begins by again addressing the affair or the ترجمة the, the biography and the personality of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in the Sahabi. Why? Because he uh, he is رضي الله عنه is the sa'il, he's a questioner in this hadith. Naam. And so the nature of the question is a reflection of the fact that he was a man of ilm. He was a person of knowledge wa fiqh. And so it was a reflection of the fact that he had knowledge and he had an understanding Naam, of the affair of deen. And so as a result of that, you find that he asked such a question. And that this question not only brought about an answer, bringing about, the, the, bringing about an answer which reflects the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also the affairs that are naam, greatest in sin as well and disobedience. فيجيب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تجعل الله ندا وهو خلق وهو خلقك فيقول ثم أي فيقول له الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تقتل ولدك خشية عن أن يطعم معك فيقول ثم أي فيقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تزاني حليل الحاء جارك فهو كما يحرس أن يعرف أحب الأعمال إلى الله يحرص كذلك على أن يعلم أن يعلم أبغض أعمال إلى الله. So when Allah, so the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم mentions the actions which are نعم the actions which are most or that carry the greatest amount of sin as well. And so he mentions the answers to have 
a deity along with Allah, to place a deity along with Allah, whilst He, Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, has created you. And then He asks, then what? And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said that you were to kill your child in fear that that child will eat with you. I take from your wealth, yeah. Then he says, then which? He says that you engage in the affair of zina with the woman, with the of a woman from your neighbor. So just as Ibn Mas'ud here, he sought of to have knowledge of the affairs. Just as Ibn Mas'ud sought to have knowledge of the affairs that are an obligation, almost beloved to Allah, he sought to have knowledge of the opposite as well. وفي حديث حديثنا هذا بيان الأمور الثلاثة هي أحب الأعمال لله. And so within this hadith, however, there was a mention of the most beloved actions to Allah. نعم. أولها الصلاة على وقتها. فالصلاة في حد ذاتها هي ركن الثاني من أركان الإسلام. والأول عبادات تشريعا ولم يبلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كسائر العبادات بواسطة جبريل بل أصر الله بعبده محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى ثم عرج به إلى السماء وهناك فوق السماوات العلاء ناجاه ربه وأكرمه وكلمه بفريدتها مباشرة فهذا دليل عظمتها وإذا صلى العبد فإنما يناجي ربه وأفضل الوقت يقترب بها العبد إلى الله هو أوائل وأوائل أوقات أوقاتها كما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعدي في أولها وفي أوائل أوقاتها ورغب في ذلك بقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم كما في هذا الحديث. So this the first affair which is mentioned is the affair. Now of the salah and its correct time, performing the salah and its correct time. And the salah itself, in definition, is the second pillar of Islam. And the first action from the ibadat legislated, yani. Naam. And it's not like the other forms of ibadat. Other forms of ibadat were conveyed to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by way of the wasita of Jibreel. Now, by way of Jibreel. However, in relation to the salah, then what had occurred in relation to the obligation of salah and the, and the legislation of salah itself was that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was taken from the Masjid al-Haram to the Masjid al-Aqsa. And then he ascended into the skies, into the heavens. Naam from Masjid al-Aqsa. And Allah Ta'ala spoke to him in relation to the affair of the salah and the obligation of the salah. And so this is the indication of the great nature of the salah itself, the great nature of, it, of it itself in the salah. And so a person praying the salah, this is a means of them being saved by the Lord. And the best time to pray the salah is at its beginning, beginning of its times. As the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, he <coughs> encouraged. وَالثَّانِي بِرْ وَالِدَيْنِ فَحَقُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ عَظِيمٌ قَرَنَ اللَّهِ بِتَوْحِيدٍ فِي غَيْرِ مَا فِي غَيْرِ مَا مِنَ الْعَيَاتِ قال تعالى واعبدوا الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا 
وبالوالدين إحسانا وقال الله تعالى قل تعالوا أتلوا ما حرم ربكم عليكم ألا تشركوا بشيء وبالوالدين إحسانا وقال تعالى وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا وغير ذلك من آيات وفي سنة المطهرة أحاديث كثيرة تدل على على إذمة الحق حق الوالدين منها هذا الحديث ومنها ألا أخبركم بأكبر الكبائر قالوا بلى يا رسول الله قال الشرك بالله وأقوك الوالدين وحديث ومنها الحديث لعن الله من لعن والديه so the next affair mentioned here is the bir walidain being dutiful towards the parents and the rights of the parents are azim or great in stature and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned these rights alongside the affair of Tawheed. Ma'am, by way of the ayat, as I mentioned previously, the ayat sought in Nisa, and worship your Lord alone, do not associate anything in partnership with him, and be dutiful towards the parents. Likewise, the statement of Allah Ta'ala say, come, let's recite what Allah, or what your Lord and made haram upon you to not associate anything in partnership with him and be dutiful towards the parents. Like as Allah said a statement and your Lord has ordained that you worship him alone and be dutiful towards the parents. Enough for the needs from the ayat. And you also find in the sunnah a hadith now that indicate and are used as proof to this affair of dutifulness towards the parents. From them, this hadith. Now, this hadith that we're, we're, we're reading through and explaining. Likewise, you have the hadith, which is found in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, where the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mentions, shall I not inform you of the greatest of sins and transgressions? I said, Naam, oh yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to associate anything in partnership with him, and to have evil or be undutiful towards the parents. Likewise, we have the hadith which is found in Sahih Muslim and the Nasa'i, that Allah has cursed the one that curses their parents. And so this is the affair of Dir Walidain. The third thing mentioned within this hadith is the jihad fi sibidillah. The jihad fi sibidillah, striving in the way of Allah. And as mentioned here, that this is in relation to the person striving with their own souls or with their wealth. With their own souls and with their wealth. And this is something where, no doubt, is an affair which is affirmed within the deen. Is a third within the deen. However, it's done in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also it's done so where it's upon a tawassut, a tidal, upon the middle way. Likewise, you have the kalam of the Aimma where they mention that the affair begins with the nafs as well. So striving with your nafs, the jihad and nafs, mujaharat and nafs, striving against oneself, is where the affair begins. So we hear this with kalima jihad which is widespread now. However, this is something which is in reference to, which begins from the speech of the ulama, we strive against oneself. As a Sheikh of Fawzan, Hafidahullah, he mentions that the nafs is of three types. 
mentioned enough, it's been a three times. You have the nafs, which is the amara besu. The amara besu. The nafs which leans towards, inclines towards evil. So it calls a person towards evil. So an individual may do an evil action, and it may be as a result of waswas from shaitan, also as a result of the nafs itself. Their own person's own self, inclining towards evil and calling towards evil. And so a person, no doubt, if they find that this is the case, then they have to strive against that. This is why the affair begins with the striving. The second is the nafs al The nafs al The same nafs that Allah wa ta'ala, refers to in Surah Al-Qiyamah. وَلَا أُقُسِمُ بِنَفْسِ اللَّوَّامَ and this is the nafs where, unlike the first, it doesn't just merely call towards evil. However, if, it, if it's a result of that evil, or if a person falls into an evil action, the nafs, this person's nafs, has a degree of nadam, regret, for what it's fallen into. And so that regret leads them to perform tawbah, or istighfar. Leads the person to repent from the sin in the first place. And then the third and final is the nafs al-mutma'inna. The nafs al-mutma'inna. The nafs which is mutma'inna which is content and tranquil. And this is the nafs, no doubt, that is content with the obedience of Allah Ta'ala. As Allah Ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Fajr, Ya ayyatahan nafs al-mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbika radiyat al-mardiyya fadukhuli fi al-ibadi wa dukhuli jannati All nafs mutma'inna calling upon the tranquil and content nafs. Return to your Lord, pleased, and, have gained, and, have gained, and after gaining his pleasure, enter upon my ibadah, I enter upon my worship, and enter my jannah. This is nafs al-mutma'inna. This is the nafs al mutma'inna. And so when a person, when we have the imma discussing the affair of majahadat and nafs, striving against oneself, then they're referring, no doubt, to striving in the sake of Allah, striving for oneself, or striving to have this nafs al mutma'inna as well. That's content with the ibadah of Allah and obedience of Allah Ta'ala. Likewise, no, no doubt a person strives. And, they, and jihad by way of their wealth as well. And then likewise, as we know, the jihad by way of their own selves in terms of fighting, in terms of battles and the like of that. This is no doubt with an imam and with conditions that are fulfilled. This is something which is reflective upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa And finally, we have Mayus Tafadu min al hadith. My father in the hadith. Who the benefit from the hadith? The first benefit we find this hadith is Ithbat Sifat al Mahabalillah al al Wajhillah Naam. So the first benefit we take from this hadith is that it affirms the attribute that Allah has of Mahabba love in a manner that is befitting. In a manner that is befitting of him, Naam. So not only does it mention Naam, the affair of love, but it mentions it in a manner that is befitting of him, as a wajal, Naam. And so, when we discuss the affair of the sifat of Allah, likewise we discuss the affair of 
the love that he has as well. The threat of his love. Now, the second is the affair, the affair that the salah, all the work to her, min aftal al amal, then the salah, the only work to her, min aftal al amal, wa ahabbuha ilallah. So, now, so if salah in his first, at the time, at the beginning of his time, now, the beginning of his time is the best of actions and the most beloved to Allah. Thalif anna al haqq al walidain azim wa birrahuma wa al qiyam hukukihima min ahab al amal ila Allah. That the right of their parents is something which is great in stature. And being dutiful towards them and establishing their rights is one of the most beloved actions to Allah. Now, and then the fourth, the final benefit mentioned here is Fadilat al Jihad fi Sibilillah wa tawakkuf al Izzat al Muslimin. وتوقف الإزة المسلمين عن الكيام به وهذا يدل عليه آيات وأحاديث كثيرة نعم and then the fourth and final is the benefit or the virtue of jihad في سبيل الله and upon this affair is the honor of the Muslims and this is established and proven by way of I, um, ayat and a hadith. Allah Ta'ala knows best. Now, then we have the next hadith. The hadith 15. Naam, the hadith, the hadith of Abi Huraira. Hadith of Abi Huraira, Rodi Law Anhu. Abu Huraira, Rodi Law Anhu, Khan, Semitu Rasulullah, he sold Allah, he was selling So, what do we say about Semitu? Highest level. Highest level of, of narrating hadith. Why? Yeah, it's something which is cut, it's definite. And if you didn't hear it, and you said submit to, then it means what? Light. Because no, there's no way that you can literally say, I heard, except that you have heard. Naam. Tell you. Naam. Submit to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You call, in all the nas. يقضى يوم القيامة علي رجل اشتح اشتحدا فأتي به فعرفه نعمه فعرفها قال فما عملت فيها قال قاتلت فيك حتى اشتشحت قال كذبت ولكن قلتلت لأن يقال جاري فقد كيل ثم عمر به فصحب على وجهه حتى ألقي في النار ورجل تعلم العلم وعلمه وقرأ, وقرأ القرآن فأتي به فعرفه نعمه فعرفها قال فما أملت فيها قال تعلمت العلم وعلمته وعلمته وقرأت فيك القرآن قال كذبت ولكنك تعلمت العلم ليقال أعلم وقرأت القرآن ليقال هو قارئ وقد كيل ثم أمر به فصحب على وجهه حتى ألقي في النار ورجل وصع, وصع الله عليه وأعطاه من أصناف الماء كله نعطاه من أصناف, من أصناف الماء كله نعم فأتي به فعرف نعمه فعرفها قال فما عملت, فما عملت فيها 
ما تركت من سبيل تحب عن ينفق فيها إلا أنفقت فيها لك قال كذبت ولكنك فألت لي قال هو جواد فقد كيل ثم عمر به فصحب على وجهه حتى ألكي في النار So this hadith is the hadith narrated by Abi Huraira رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنه where he says I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say Indeed, the first of the people that will be judged on the Qiyamah, from the first of the people to be judged on the Qiyamah, is a man. Is a man that is martyred. So he's brought, he's brought to be judged. And he's made to acknowledge his blessings. To the extent that he agrees and acknowledges them. And they said to him, and what did you do by way of them, by way of your blessings? He will say, I have fought for your sake to the extent that I, that I have been martyred. And it said, you have lied. However, you fought in order for it to be said that you are jari, that you are courageous. And indeed it was said, so the command came that he be dragged upon his face until he's thrown into the fire. And then there was a man that learned from the ilm, yani ilm al-shari'i, ilm of the deen. And he taught it and read from the Quran. And so it came, or it, came, it was brought before him, his blessings. And he acknowledged them. And he said, what did you do by way of them, by way of these blessings? He said that I learnt the knowledge, the ilm. Naam. And I read from the Quran for your sake. And they said, you have lied. However, you learnt the knowledge so that it can be said that you are an alim, or you are a scholar. And that you read from the Quran so that it could be said that you are a qari, that you are a reciter in the Quran. And indeed it was said, so the command came that he was dragged upon his face, that he was dragged upon his face and thrown within the fire. And then you have the man that Allah Ta'ala had gave him a vast amount of wealth. He did not leave any form of wealth that he had said that he blessed this man with it. And he, his blessings were brought before him to the extent that he acknowledges them. And he said, what did you do by way of them? By way of these blessings? And he said, I did not leave any form or any manner in which you love your wealth to be spent except that I spent my, my wealth by way of that. For your sake. For the sake of Allah. And he said, you have lied. However, you did all of that. I spent all of that wealth you call Jawad, who are Jawad, that he is generous. And indeed it was said. So the command came that he be dragged upon his face until he thrown within the fire. And so this hadith is found in, or is recorded by Muslim, Ahmed and Nasai. Muslim Ahmed and Nasai. So Muslim in Sahih Muslim. Ahmed in his Musnad and Nasai in his Sunan. And the narrator of this hadith is Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And we've covered, alhamdulillah, we've covered his biography previously. Abdurrahman ibn Sakhar al Dawsi. Now, and so as for the summon of Mufradat, the meaning of this hadith, we have Yukda, Yukda afan alayhi. يُخْضَعَ عَلَيْهِ يُحَاكَمْ يُحَاسَبْ يعني that they were brought before they were brought for judgment and يُحَاسَبْ brought to account نعم they brought for judgment and they brought to account as well وَأُسْتُشْحِدَ is that the person attained the shahada يعني I martyred him 
I attain martyrdom fi ma yabdu lin nas. Anhu kutila fi So, because the narration mentions that the man ustushida, that he was martyred. Now, however, later on in the narration, it mentions no, that he lied. What he said, that he's thrown within the fire. So, in reality, he wasn't a martyr, because you know that a martyr will not be thrown within the fire. However, the Shaykh mentions here in his definition of a stushida, the person being martyred, is that they, they have attained martyrdom. However, the Shaykh mentions this part here, which is, which is um, critical. Fima yabdulinnas. I, in that which is apparent, or that which seems apparent to the people. Naam, that from what's apparent to the people, the, the individuals fighting, fi sibilillah. Naam, fighting jihad, fi sibilillah. And then he's killed in the, in, in the course of that battle. Naam, so it's, it's assumed that they, the person is martyred. And then the word jari'un meaning shuja'un, yani shuja'un. Jodi, both referring to courage, courageous. Naam. And then suhiba, meaning jurra mabtuhan ala batlihi wa wajhahu bi'anf wa shidda ihanatan lahu. That suhiba, I mean dragged, is a reference to them being pulled Naam, upon their front, upon their stomachs, Naam, and their face, Naam, in a way which is shadid, in a severe manner, in a severe, violent manner, and this action in of itself is ihana, it's humiliation. Ulkiya, Rumia Finari, and the person Ulkiya, they were thrown within the fire. Now, what matter the Ejmali, the general meaning of this hadith here? In the fee, Masir, Haole Falatha, Ashkia, the Ibra, Wazukwa Zikra, the Mankana, Lahu, Kalb, Wal Alka Sam, Wahua Shahid, Ma. ما بالهم وما الذي دهاهم أليس الجهاد في سبيل الله أفضل الأعمال أليس هو ذروة سنام الإسلام أليس للمجاهد في سبيل الله مئة درجات ما بين درجتين كما بين السماء والأرض أليس الشهداء أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون ويسحرون ويسرحون في الجنة حيث شاءوا أليس علماء ورفة الأنبياء ألم يقول لا يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات وهذا متصدق المحسن الذي لا يترك السبيل يحبه يحبه الله إلا أنفق فيها أليس الله يثيب على الحسنة على حسنة العشر أمثالها إلى سبعمية ضعف إلى أضعاف الكثيرة خصوصا إذا كان البذل في سبيل الله ألم يحث ربنا على البذل وإنفاق في سبيله فماذا, فماذا الذي أصابهم وجعلهم أول ما يقضى عليه ويقذف به في النار جهنم أعاذنا الله من هذا المصير and so, the Shaykh begins by mentioning that the affair and what became, what became of these individuals, now that these three wretched individuals, is an ibrah, is a lesson, and something to take as a reminder for the one that has a heart, and they are prepared to listen with their ears as well. Hear and listen by way of these lessons. The first one being a shaheed, the worst one being the one that is appeared to be a martyr. And is jihad not from the greatest of actions a person can perform? Now, 
It's not from the affairs that are seen to hold up the deen of Islam. Is it not that the mujahid, the one that, is, that, that strives in the way of Allah, seen to be of 100 levels? Seen to be of 100 levels between each level, yani, between two of the levels, between the heaven and the earth. Likewise, is it not that the ulama, the second individual, is seen to be an alim? Is it not that the ulama are from the warafat al anbiya? Inheritance of the prophets. Did Allah not mention in relation to them that Allah raises those in levels whom believe and gives them, bestows upon them knowledge? Likewise, the one, the third one that gives from charity. He does not leave anything from the form of the charity in the way of Allah. Or spending, is this not the person that gains a large amount of reward to the extent that is of 700, 700 fold? The person that strives in the way of Allah in these ways. Did Allah Ta'ala not encourage us to strive and exert ourselves in spending? In his path. So what was it that left these individuals to be from the first that were judged and thrown within the fire of Jahannam? And we seek Allah's refuge from that affair. لَقَدْ بَيَّنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ سَبَبْ مَصِيرُ هَذَا سِيدْ مَصِيرُ هُمْ هَذَا هُوَ هُوَ أَنَّهُمْ لَمْ يُخْلِصُوا لِلَّهِ فِي هَذِي الْعَمَالِ الَّتِي تَبْدُ لِلنَّاسِ أنه عظيمة أنها عظيمة ولم يريدوا بها وجه الله بل كانت مقاصدهم سيئة وأغراضهم فاسدة وهو حب الثناء من الناس ومد والإطراء فلم يرد ذلك المجاهد وجه الله ولا إعلاء كلمة الله إنما أرى بذلك النفس نفسه وأحب أن يعلو سيته ويشتهر بين الناس بالبطولة والشجاعة والإقدام وقد حصل ذلك فكان جزاؤه في الدنيا أما في الآخرة فكانت جزاؤه أن يفضح وتكشف سريرته ثم يقضف في النار نعم أن سو the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he clarifies the reason as to why this, the affair became like this for these three individuals. Why the affair became like this for these three individuals. And the reason is because they did not have ikhlaqs, they were not sincere for the sake of Allah in their actions. Naam. So whilst it appeared to be sincere actions or appeared to be righteous actions to the people, they were not sincere in his actions. And they did not want, and they were not seeking the face of Allah by way of those actions. Rather, their intentions were evil. Their goals were fasted, were corrupt. Why? Because they had love and intent for the thana, the praise of the people, and the recognition of the people. So that mujahid, he did not want and he was not seeking the face of Allah. Nor was he seeking to make the kalimatullah al-uliya. Nor was he seeking to make the kalimatullah al high. Rather, he intended by way of that something for himself. Naam. He intended to raise himself. He intended to be, to have fame amongst the people, or notoriety amongst the people, and be a champion of the people, and be considered to be a courageous individual amongst the people. And he attained that. 
He attains it. And so his jaza, his reward, is in the dunya. As for the akhirah, then the recompense in the akhirah is one of humiliation. An exposure. And being thrown within the fire. So this is the individual. He sought something. He, he did the action on the face of it. The action was an action which was righteous. In reality, it was an evil action because he was seeking the recognition of the people. Seeking the recognition of the people. And so as a result, he's dragged upon his face and thrown into the fire. And so he attained that which he intended. He attained that which he intended. He attended the recognition of the people. And he attained it. He gained the recognition. He was seen by the people as a courageous individual. He was seen by the people as a, as a champion of the people. So he gained that. However, in terms of the akhirah, because he did the action which was since which, which is only for the sake of Allah, which should only be for the sake of Allah, because he did this for the sake of the people, the recognition of the people, he received the recompense in the akhirah for that. نعم وعم العالم فلم يطلب العلم لله ليتفقه فيه الدين ولا ويعلم ما يجب على الله والكتاب والرسول والناس في أديه ولم يعلم ولم يعلم الناس لوجه الله لوجه الله يرجو ثواب النشر العلم والدعوة إلى الله إنما ليقال فلان عالم وفلان علامة لعلامة الزمان وحافظ الوقت وقارئ الأمة فكان جزاؤه أن تفضح نواياه ويحتك ستره يوم القيامة جزاء سواء قصده, قصده ثم يلك في النار نعم and so, we have the individual that was the alim, and it, from that which was apparent. However, he did not seek ilm, referring now that to the ilm of the sharia, ilm al nafi, the beneficial knowledge. He did not seek the ilm in order to understand the deen, have fiqh fi deen, understand it in deen. And to know what Allah Ta'ala had made obligatory upon him. And what was and to have knowledge of the book and his messenger and their people and to propagate that knowledge. And he did not teach the people seeking the face of Allah, hoping for the reward of spreading that knowledge. And calling to Allah. Rather, it was done so it could be said that Fulan is the Alam of Zaman. That Fulan is the Alim, and he's a scholar of this time. Or he's a Hafid. He's a Hafid of this time. Or he's a Qari, he's the reciter of this Ummah. And so, the recompense. And the consequence of that is the humiliation. The humiliation of his evil intents. And the exposure of his covering on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Which is a recompense for his evil intents. They be thrown within the fire. وَأَمَّا صَاحِبِ mal. فَلَمْ يَشْكُرُ اللَّهِ الَّذِي أَسْبَغَ عَلَيْهِ تِلْكَ النِّعَمِ نعم وَلَمْ يَكُنْ مِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالَ فِيهِمْ وَالَّذِينَ فِي, والذين في أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقُ الْمَعْلُومِ لِسَائِلُ وَالْمَحْرُومِ وَلَمْ يُدْرِكْ أَنَّ الْمَالِ مَالُ اللَّهِ اسْتَخْلَفَهُ فِيهِ لِيَنْظُرْ كَيْفَ يَعْمَلْ لذلك هو فهو لا يريد بما ينفقه وجه الله 
ولا يعرف طريقا إلى الإخلاص لوجه الله إنما يريد أن يبتغى الناس بمجده وليلحج الشعراء بمدحه وأن يتير في الناس أخبار أخبار الجواد أخبار الجود جوده وسخائه فكان له ذلك ونال ما قصده في الحياة الدنيا وأما الآخرة التي لم يردها فإن الجزاء فيها عن الحساب الدقيق وجزاء العادل والملائكة غلاف الشداد لا يأسون الله ما عمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون نعم تنتظروه ليسحب على وجهه ثم يقذف في النار Now, so then, in relation to the, to the third individual, the one that had the man, the one that had the wealth, this individual did not praise and have gratitude towards his Lord in relation to that wealth, in relation to that ni'mah. It was not from the individual that Allah Ta'ala mentioned that within those, with those it's, a specific, it's a specific right in relation to their wealth. And Qulam Yudrik, and he was not of the understanding, he did not come to the correct understanding that his wealth was left to him, that Allah left his wealth to him in order to see what he would do with his wealth. And so due to that, these individuals did not seek to spend their wealth in the way of Allah. They were not sincere spending their wealth in the way of Allah, seeking the face of Allah. Rather, they sought the people. They sought the praise of the people. They sought to be raised amongst the people. They sought that they be mentioned, and when they are mentioned, they are mentioned for their generosity. And they attained that. They attained that which they intended in this dunya. As for the akhirah, then they attained that which was a specific recompense. And a recompense which was adil, one which was just, performed and brought about by the malaika. The malaika that which that only do that which they are commanded. And they waited for this individual so that they may drag him upon his front and throw him in the fire. المنفقين علمهم يتعذون ويخلصون أعمالهم لله فيظفرون بوعد الله وينجون من إيقاب الله النازل بالمرائين والمنافقين and so within this this hadith is a lesson for all of those Naam from and an admonishment for all of those from those who are the muaf the the uh, munafik the afwan the mujahideen and the ulama and the athriya. So from those that were that sh- that fight in the way of Allah, or those that are ulama, those that have knowledge of the deen and sought knowledge of the deen and taught knowledge of the deen, or those that have wealth and spend their wealth. Naam, all of this. Oh, this this narration is a is a a lesson for them, an admission for them, and a reminder for them that they have to purify their actions sincerely for the sake of Allah, and be well aware of the of the wa'ad of Allah, of the threat of Allah Taala. And seek to be saved from the punishment of Allah Ta'ala that will descend upon those that fall into showing off, 
and the hypocrites. In addition to this, a Sheikh uh, Fawzan he mentions, I'm going to explain in this hadith as well, Sheikh Fawzan he mentions, similar to what Sheikh Rabia has mentioned here, that these actions, on the face of them, were righteous actions. Jihad fi sabilillah, talab al ilm, wa ta'lim al ilm, infaq fi sabilillah, and spending in the way of Allah. All of these actions were seen to be right, were righteous actions on the face of them, when that which was apparent. However, they were all, without exception, in this hadith, were evil actions due to the intention behind them. Due to the intention behind them. So this is the first thing the Sheikh mentions. Also, he mentions similar to what Sheikh Rabir mentions, that they intended, all of them intended the praise of the people. So what you find within this hadith is that everyone actually gains that which they intended. So the individual that fought, he intended and he wanted in reality the praise of the people. He attained it. The one that sought knowledge, he intended and he wanted by way of that talab al ilm and that ta'lim al ilm. He wanted by way of that, not the face of Allah, but he wanted the praise of the people to be recognized as an alim. And he gained it. And the third was the one that spent his wealth, all these different forms of wealth, and he did so because he wanted to be recognized amongst the people as the one that is generous, and he gained that recognition. However, as a result of them gaining that which they wanted from the dunya, they attained by way of the akhirah, humiliation. And this is something which relates again to the hadith al-mashhur narrated by Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentions innama amala bin niyat wa innama li kulli imin ma nawa that indeed actions are by their intentions and they must have gained that which they intended so in, in, in relation to this hadith they all intended the praise of the people recognition of the people and the shuhra recognition notoriety they all intended that and they gained that which they intended. I saw another individual may do the same actions, but he intend the face of Allah by way of those actions, and then they gained that in the akhirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Yeah, there's everything we've combined in the second hadith. There was no benefits mentioned in the second hadith. So the, the nafs, as for the the qalb and the qalb is the, the physical morsel of, of flesh. Now, the qalb is the physical morsel of flesh. And <clears throat> it's a morsel of flesh that can be affected physically as well as spiritually. Now, I'm affected positively or negatively, physically or spiritually. And that's why, hence, where the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions the example, taqriban. Naam, Allah fitasidi mudra. إذا فسدت فسدت جسد كله وإذا صلحت صلح جسد كله ألا وهي القلب يعني. Indeed, there's a muscle of flesh. That if this muscle of flesh is, is corrupted, then the whole body be corrupted. And if this muscle of flesh is um, is um, upright or left to be upright, then it be upright. Indeed, it's the heart. This is the example the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم gave as um, تقريب one of which is known as uh, an example which can be brought about and understood from reality as well, from its realities. So the physical reality of, of the heart is that if the heart is corrupt, then it's going to corrupt the whole body. The whole body will be corrupt to the extent the person may die or the person will be severely ill. To the extent as well that if the heart is, is upright, if the heart's in good health, 
then the general, the whole body will be in good health as well, um, physically speaking. As for the spiritually, then the same, the same occurs. That is when talking about, when I'm referring to the heart, and if the heart is corrupt, I spiritually, I deflect dots appear upon the heart by way of the norm, then this is going to affect the other actions of the, of the, of the abd. Why? Because the affair of iman is tasdiq al qalb, it's belief within the heart. So if a person's iman is weak, then it's going to reflect upon their speech upon their tongue. And it's reflected upon the amal of the jawari, the actions upon the limbs. Now, as for the nafs, then the nafs is something which is some, something more related to the, the spiritual uh, reality of the, of the servant. Now, and the thing that the person must strive against. So the asal, now, the asal of the heart, of the nafs rather, is that it may lean towards and incline towards doing evil actions. Nam. And so it's upon the individual to strive to make to, to uh, discipline their own selves, their nafs, and being upright in order to be upright. Nam. Whilst the asset of the heart may not be the case of corrupt of, of a corrupt nature. No. Or not. Yeah, the, the no doubt, in, in relation to all affairs, when we talk about um, loving and hating for the sake of Allah, Allah we can only love from that which is apparent. Naam. We can only love for what, for what is apparent. apparent. A person if upon the apparent is upon the sunnah and is upon ibadah and is upon the ta'atullah. Naam. We can't say maybe in his house he's asi. You know, he's, upon, he's upon disobedience, so I'm not going to love him fully for the sake of Allah. Naam. This was Sheikh, this is something that Sheikh Zaid al Madkhali, um, he mentions in relation to this affair of Allah wa Bara, that you love someone, your love and your hate with someone is dependent upon what is apparent from their ta'atillah. Now, what is apparent from their obedience towards, towards Allah Ta'ala. And your hate towards someone from what's apparent from them, from their fisk as well. Now, this is why you find when we discuss the affair of Allah wa Bara, generally is something which is more, we discuss it more in relation to the affair of bid'ah. Now, because bid'ah, no doubt, is fisk. Now, it's wrongdoing. But it's something which a person will make apparent. Now, a person may not make other, other actions of disobedience apparent. The person may be upon disobedience. Now, however, they may not make that apparent. As for the kabair, as for the affair of, of bid'ah, the person believes themselves to be upon the haq, so they make, themselves, they make it apparent. So because this is apparent from them, then we say, okay, khalas. We, we uh, establish our fear of wala'a bara, loving and hating, based on what we see from these individuals now. So it's something which is apparent. And now this hadith is a dilla for that as well. Now. Um, how can fear of In terms of actions towards uh, the parents, then sometimes you have to look at culture as well. Now, so if there's a if, it's a, if it's a, as long as the culture doesn't oppose Islam, now, so for example, person doesn't bow for them and things like this is not something which is permissible. But a person, for example, stands for their parents, so they stand for their elders. This is something which is except when a lot of cultures, I guess. Naam. So then if, you, if this is seen to be an action where, in a broader sense, it's something which brings about um, happiness towards the parents, or happiness from the parents, that the parents are, are happy and they're glad in terms of when they see that their, their, their children um, are presenting towards them actions of respect. Naam, and actually respect that are permissible. Naam. Then within that, if a person has a good intention and they're seeking to please their parents, then this, is, this could all be uh, included within that affair of Durwali thing. Even though maybe in China it's not the same thing. Or another land is not the same thing. Standing for them doesn't mean anything. So it doesn't now mean it's not, it's not now a universal thing that you must do this particular action to do Durwali thing. Rather, it's the wider affair of pleasing the parents in whichever is possible. 
No, I'm so if you can please the parents, and this is something by way of a cultural action or, or other than that, for that, but it's, no. Lay down. This, that's, all that should be yeah, definitely avoided. All that, when, when lowering is lowering yourself, because this is a fear of humanity. Lowering yourself is, is only for Allah, and this is why. This is what we do these actions in the salah, the bowing and the prostration, because it's, it's the ultimate act of humility. Ultimate act of humility. It's for Allah Taala. No. Distance themselves. No. First and foremost, in terms of hukuk, rights, the rights are not mushtarata. They're not conditional. Naam. People have rights based upon who they are, based upon who, who they are, who the positions they have, whether it be parents, whether it be husband, whether it be wife, whether it be children, whether it be whoever they are, they have those rights. So as soon as those as soon as that's established, they have the rights. So it can be established by birth. Parents, children, for example. It can be established by agreements. So, nikah. So, this nikah is fulfilled, okay. And this is now the husband, this is the wife. There's rights now. It can be established by contracts. This is a business partner, this is a business partner. We both have rights now. It cannot be said now that because this one doesn't observe the rights, as soon as whatever's occurred has established these rights now, established this position where these people have rights, as soon as that's occurred, it cannot be said that this one has the rights, this one doesn't have the rights. Or this one, I'm going to fulfill the rights only on the condition that this has been fulfilled. Now, this is something that Allah Ta'ala has ordained, that these rights be fulfilled. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the affair of Ihsan and being dutiful should be an affair of da'wah as well and can be an affair of da'wah as well. So just because a person didn't receive their rights from an individual, if the person is still alive, and we're still talking about the person still alive in this scenario, then the parents still alive. Yeah. They give the rights to the parents. Because this can be a means of da'wah towards the parent where they become the individual that gives the rights. And they start to establish the rights of, of, of their child. How many times do you have people they'll say that my parents are not practicing even? Now, So forget about your rights, haven't given the rights to Allah as a wajah. But through da'wah and through, through patience and everything else, they start practicing. So they start establishing Allah's rights. After they start establishing Allah's rights, indeed, inshallah, they'll start establishing the rights of those around them. But it's a case of, first and foremost, you do that which is best for you. A person does that which is best for them. They establish the rights for the sake of Allah. The worst that's going to happen is they get, they be in the, if they're upon a class, they'll be rewarded for it. Naam. And it's not about getting what you feel is owed to you or attain that which is owed to you. No, rather, a person has establishes the rights for the individuals. Likewise, as we mentioned, even though it's, of course it's da'wah as well, when Allah Ta'ala has mentioned bir walidain, when the messenger of Allah Ta'ala has mentioned bir walidain, be due towards the parents, there's not, they do not specify the Muslim parents even. Naam. This affair of being dutiful towards the parents is for any parent. As soon as they're your parent, they have that right. Naam, that you have to establish these rights for them. And this can be a means of drawing them closer to Islam and closer to the Sunnah. So a person shouldn't seek to, uh, to be selfish and gain from that, or gain which they feel like is owed to them, or feel like they've, they've been hard done by it, so they're not going to give anything back. Because it's not about, really about the person in the first place, anyway. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the rights that a person has to do in terms of fulfilling the obligations of Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's the main. That's the main thing. No. Wow. Salamta. This action here is shirk in of itself. Shirk asqar, yani. Showing off. It can lead to shirk, and as, as uh, Imam Sa'di, he mentioned, 
the shirk of Asqa or Riyah can lead to the major shirk. Why? Because Riyah in of itself is the glorification of other than Allah. How? No. So you cause you have to please other people. You're glorifying these people that you're truly trying to please. You're raising them. By way of your actions, by way of you're doing is actions of ibadah for these people to see you or for them to know that you're doing the action for whatever way, they know that you're going to do it. You're raising them. And this is the action of glorification. Naam. So this affair of raising them, once you begin to raise someone is in a manner which is haram, then of course it can lead to a person raising them to the extent that they do what? They start to worship them. They actually start to worship them. Naam. So even though it's something which is small and it can be subtle as well, where a person is raising an individual now by way of just showing off. They don't realize they're even, they're even raising them. They may just want to have the intent of showing off. They just, they just want recognition in the dunya. But they don't realize that they're raising a person. And so this can lead to them giving up more and more and more in order to get this recognition to the extent that they may even start directing ibadah towards them itself and then that's when it becomes the uh, major shirk. No. So this is how it can lead to that. This is what uh, Imam Sa'di mentions in his explanation of uh, the affair of Riyadh. No. The oppressor, no. Mm-hmm. Is it, is this the hadith from what I understand is speaking of the, about the Muslims specifically in terms of aid the brother that the oppressed, the the dalim of the maflum, the oppressor and the oppressed. However, there may be scenarios where there's a maslaha, there's a benefit in aiding the one who is. Um, as well from the non-Muslims. Again, probably da'wah and other affairs like that. So, this, this, is, this is how this is understood. Yeah, for sake of da'wah and, and, and bringing about, and bringing about general, general peace and harmony as well. Because you know? if you allow everyone to be a, a zalim, then it is maybe not in relation to this hadith specifically, but it brings about greater harms if everyone is oppressing each other, no. Regardless of the tijah ad what the opinion or what they're upon in terms of their deen, no. I said, inshallah, I get back and fly. Zakhalak it. No. So when they when they call they call the the first other and everyone everyone gets up to pray so no. If you're if you're praying the sunnahs anyway, and you tend to pray the sunnahs anyway, for now that's prayer continue. However, it may be better not to, so you differentiate yourself from them and their innovative practice. No. Maybe it's better not to. I know it's best not. There's what? There's a historical community in that area in Barking. Yeah. And basically, they um, hold you in high prayer there. Okay. And obviously, sometimes you can't get to uh, Masjid Ibn Bazar or Masjid Ibn Masjid Kurz or Haram. Um, so we have to go pray there. So today, what we noticed is they call the labor MP, which is a lady. And before the khutbah, she came out from the everyone. She didn't give the khutbah. Even if you bring in something from Bukhari, he said, I don't want to um, do it. So, it should be praised. 
The short answer is no. <laughs> the short answer is no, because um, a person that you know is if he's it seems like, uh, before you could say okay maybe he doesn't know he's lined up on the message of Allah, so they tell him no. However, if things have been brought to him and he's rejecting it. This is this is Ali, because he's not he's openly falling into action that the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was threatened with the fire. Whoever lies upon me, potentially didn't let him take his seat from the hellfire. Now, so actions such as this way, that's a lot of this is greater than this woman coming. For example, it's it's it's, it's stupid, and it's a case of it's um, it's harmful, and it's innovative, and there's a hisbiya involved when bringing this woman to 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 tell people to vote and whatever else and. A lot of those best people want money for these for these things, but when a person is openly lying upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they're not accepting uh, not accepting adilla wa nasiha, then this problem you shouldn't pray with this person. You shouldn't listen to this person. You shouldn't listen to this person at all. No, Allah knows best. So. Okay. Yeah, Allah, Allah it's, 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 it's a case of sometimes people they will. It may not be a case of he doesn't have the proof or whatever. He just it's arrogance. It could be a fair of arrogance as well, where a person says, like, "I don't need. Who am I to show you the proof?" Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, this is. There was a young brother, mm. and he was saying, Who are you? Are you and you're this, and you're Yeah, this, all of this is like in terms of bad character traits, that's another thing. But if a person is lying upon the Messenger of Allah, he's not listening to someone, he's not listening to any al nasiha, this is sufficient. He's got all these bad character traits in terms of arrogance as well, and then he wants to bring the woman to talk to the people, then try and find somebody else, inshallah. Like I wouldn't advise it at all, no. It's harmful. It's harmful. Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Barakallahu <coughs> Allah. Good question. It's a good question. The best option is to come to Bin Baz. If you're in East London, come to Masjid Bin Baz. Zakum la khaira. Sometimes it's, it's always, it's right. you don't want you to be out and about. It's always good to know where you are. So it's always good to know, okay, what massage you like in these areas that you are. Like, uh, it's difficult. For example, when we, like, when we go up north, it's like you need to know where you are because when you're up north now, it's not, it's not like you can pray anywhere. Someone's a masjid and it's just like they got a grave in the masjid, they got something like they got a chair in the masjid. So you need to know where you are and what your surroundings are, generally speaking. So it's a case like that as well. That's why, you, that's why you try to plan ahead. So you try to know. That's what I mean. Plan, plan ahead as to where you're going to go. If you're on a journey. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm What's happening on page If she's talking, because I think she's there, she's there to talk like about her politics and then go. Or she, I'm assuming it's not that bad, but she's gonna, she's not gonna, she's gonna go to the sister section afterwards. But if she's there to give to the juma, for example, then there's no juma. So there's no juma to stay there for. But if she, if she otherwise, obviously, ever lower the gaze, so the she finishes it. Then. If, if there's nowhere else for her to pay juma, and Allah knows best. I don't know if it's a person can say I can legitimately uh, miss Juma for this reason. Allah knows best, I don't know. Miss Juma, that's the that's the bottom line. Zakam la khaira, barak la fi. Sallallahu barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.